Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Peters. I'm the division president with BGSF overseeing our professional services operations. And uh, as we look to honor uh, Black History Month here as an organization, I've got a conversation here today with my friend Demetrius Short, who's with Transformation Life Center. Uh, Demetrius and I have uh, known each other for a while and we were active in the community together. And uh, Demetrius, I, I, I thought of you when we were putting this together and, and, and kind of getting some awareness out there through social media. And so thanks for joining us today, man. And uh, I'm going to enjoy this here today. Appreciate you always, doing it. Always excited to be here. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was thinking of this, I, I kind of thought of where just to start this conversation with folks in, in, in reverence to Black History Month. And um, what are ways that you celebrate Black History Month, Demetrius. I don't think I've ever asked you that. You know, what? How do you acknowledge it? What do you do in in your professional life and in your personal life uh, to acknowledge this month? Yeah, for me personally, it's it's as the world recognizes this month. It's it's personally for me, it's an awareness of and a soul search for uh, recognizing you know our forefathers and who came before me. Uh, it's either a book or a, a movie. It's a personal reflection of me uh, to see, as with Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, I consider myself to be the dream. And I always reflect on what they uh, were not able to do that I have the privilege to do today. And so it starts within me recognizing, man, just how blessed and how honored I am. So it's always self-reflection uh, and really making sure that I am living up to and making them proud for what they fought for, what they died for, what they struggled for. Uh, so the very first thing I do in Black History Month, man, is always a self-reflection uh, of where I am, you know, how am I feeling, uh, to acknowledge the, of where we came from, but also see exactly just how far we have come. Uh, sometimes we focus on what we don't have, but when we pause, uh, we've, come a, we've come a long way. Uh, and so I just recognize that personally. And then I try to, I don't try to, I do get out and I make an impact in the community. I find a college student. It's just an act of kindness or mentoring to pass forward uh, what our great leaders and forefathers did for us. So I take a young college student, I take someone on the street or, and just impart into them, into them uh, the spirit of love and share some wisdom to them to empower them for the future. So a little bit of self-reflection uh, level level uh, setting myself to make sure that I'm uh, acknowledging the great past that we had, the current and the future. And then it's important some wisdom into some of our younger generation to let them know exactly we are passing the ports to them uh, for them to continue to press forward for all of us to be equal. Yeah, and, and it's the intentionality of that, right? The intentionality of the focus the self-reflection and and paying it forward. Um, and, I, and I think of you all the time when we're doing things in the market together to try and impact people's lives and trying to help those in need. And and let me tell you, man, you're 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 a powerful leader. You're out there leading this charge, and you have this infectious um, momentum about you that people want to get behind. And um, I, one of the main themes that we have this year at BGSF is be bold, mm -hmm. be bold out there in whatever it is that you do to help impact others and help make a change. And, I, and I'm just curious to when you look back at earlier experiences in your life, Demetrius, that make you the person you are today, that make you the leader that you are today. Could, could, is there any experience that jumps out at you that says, oh, man, yeah, this this really impacted me and made me who I am today from a leadership capacity. Yes, indeed. I mean, I've always, you know, been the 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 the, the leader in the community for my friends. I had a have an old nature. Uh just couldn't run from it from elementary school, uh Sunday school, uh in church growing up. I was the one that everyone looked at to ask the hard questions, you know, why can't we do this? Why can't we? You know, it's kind of like the commercial with Mikey who eats the cereal. Demetrius will do it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I look back on it while it was tough. I reflect that people saw leadership in me from an early age. And I, I carried that responsibility. Uh, I treated people fairly. You know, in school, we had certain issues at times. You know, when, when Blacks wanted me to, hey, why are you hanging with them? My father taught me to be your own man, love everybody. 
And so I think when when issues came up in the community as a young man, uh, people came to me, even teachers, you know, came to me and said, Demetrius, you know, and I'm going, I'm a student. Why is the principal calling me into the office when there's an issue uh, surrounding race? Uh, but when I look back on that, wow, that's a po- that's powerful for them to see that in a 14, 15, 16 year old. And so I always have valued uh, the, the position that I have to do the right thing. Uh, to treat people fairly, and those leadership skills have matriculated well into my uh, my career. Again, being young at IBM, and 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 my manager looking at me and saying, "Hey, I believe you can lead." And I'm going, I'm fresh out of college, and I have these 30 year vets there, very intimidating. But he looked me in the face and said, "Man, I watch how you treat people. I watch how people gravitate to you. Uh, there's a leader in you. So to be able to step into those those seats in my young career, being uh, the youngest, but still being able to interact and and, and lead people, uh, uh, that's the residue that, uh, from great leaders that have imparted into me down through my years. You know, starting with my father and and some influential people in my life, and I cherish the opportunity to lead and." Eric, be a servant leadership. Uh, I love to serve. I value serving uh, people and the door that I have open for anyone to come in uh, and value my leadership and my uh, my perspective and feel comfortable, whether it's advantageous to them or not, that they can value uh, the time that I share with them. So that's that's something that I, I hold heart, um, hold heart um, clear to uh, near to my heart, and uh, we'll do that to the day I die. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, when something that comes to my mind when I think of, of Black History Month, um, and this comes up in a lot of conversations I have with people, uh, the word mentor and mentorship. And and I know in my life, uh, one of the people that I looked up to that that uh, started off as as a business relationship and ended up in more of a personal friend relationship. And I considered him a mentor in, in business. A lot of what we do was Daryl Freeman. Oh, yes. A strong, strong uh, African-American leader who, who who came up hard, came up through, you mm-hmm. know, Mark Knox, man, and, and really aspired. And and I know Daryl, you know, meant a lot to you as well, our, our friend who passed. Um, so certainly maybe talk about him, but, but, but other strong African-American mentors that you've had, Demetrius, mm-hmm. and like listeners would want to hear about, people they may want to research and and, and, and go look into, or uh, or, or people or, that you just kind of looked up to and gave you guidance in that servant leadership that you speak about so strongly? Yes, indeed. First and foremost, I, I didn't have to look outside of my house for a hero. Uh, my hero was my dad, you know, UPS truck driver up, up to top level supervisor. You know, I have five brothers and a sister, so a house of eight, and to see my dad get up every day, to see him provide. My mom didn't have to work, you know, um, um, but she did work. Six boys and a girl, she was working. I think my dad loved to go to UPS to get away from us at home and the great work that my mom and dad had to do. But my father uh, instilled so much into me, so I, I'm thankful that I did not have to look outside the home to find uh, stick to witness, perseverance, um, good leadership traits that you saw him get up every day, value people. So it started with it in the home and then uh, at Fisk University, uh, great HBCU, uh, I met Mr. Anthony Jones, who took me in uh, as a big brother and mentored me. Uh, he's been a leader with uh, organizations like En-ROADS and have held uh, institutional advancement uh, positions at Fisk and Howard University, took me under my wings and, and, and helped me through my pathway through college. As you know, some of my story was me being sleeping uh, in the dorm director's office, um, you know, walking to and fro. Uh, but leaders like him showed me that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and he invested back into me, into my collegiate career, and still in my life today. Uh, Robin Massey. Uh, when you talk about being bold, to have Robin Massey at IBM, a black executive female in the '80s, right? Just yeah. Just pack, package all of that, right? You yeah. know, corporate America, IT, you know, white male dominated, for, and for Robin to hire five African American students, me being one, 
out of Fisk University and bring us to IBM in 1999, uh, five of us, and for us to walk in that office, this bold, courageous leader, female, Black, uh, to defy the odds, right? It was not known. They looked at us as if we, I had a, some a employee say, what are they doing here? Called me a they you know, in 1999, because they were not familiar with five smart black students coming from HBCUs, walking into IBM Global Services to create our career, but Robin did that, yeah. uh, and they called us Robin's kids, and here we are, I'm 50 years old, yeah. uh, she, and, she and Greg didn't have any children, and still today, we are considered her children, all five of us, Kim, Pam, uh, me, uh, and Nicole, uh, and, and Andy, we are still considered her kids and she still nurtures us. She still tells us about uh, decision makings and things in her career. So Robin was bold enough uh, to look around and notice that she could do something with that position. And while she could have hired one and, and a couple, she took the notion to say, no, I'm going to change the trajectory and make uh, the opportunity for Black students to come into a great organization. Um, and it took great, great strength for her to do that. Uh, as she talked about some of the uh, the struggles of being Black and female in corporate America. And then, for, of course, for me to meet Mr. Dale Freeman, to come back to Nashville from Carolina uh, with Robin Massey, AJ, in my life and to meet Daryl Freeman and for him to hire me at Zycron to see a black man own uh, an amazing organization, as you say, come from what I believe 15 to uh, less than $2,000 in his account to grow this organization and to work for him to see success, to see someone who've already paved the way uh, and to work for him and for him to take time out of his schedule to come over and mentor and share time with me and also see him work, uh, us work hand in hand in the community to find the future Daryls, the future Demetrius is, uh, was just a rewarding experience that I, that I will forever cherish yeah. having the opportunity to work uh, for and be a friend of Daryl Freeman. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'll tell you, um, I use the word mentor with Daryl because he challenged me, you know, what are you going to do about this? What do you do to get involved in the community and help people? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to work with blacks and technology and associations like those to, to help promote what an IT career can be for people? Mm -hmm. of color? Um, and you do that with me as well. You challenge me. You get on the phone with me and say, Eric, these are programs that we're doing at Transformation Life Center that are game changing and mm -hmm. this is how it's impacting the African-American community. And I just want to, for our listeners out there, I, I, I think it's worthy of this being Black History Month and talking about um, what that means to folks. A lot of things you're doing in the community and that the organizations doing in the community are very, very, very impactful to keep that uh, reverence going to the strong African-Americans that we've talked about on this call and the people that, that made an influence to you. So maybe highlight for the listeners a few things that you have going on uh, at TLC that you feel are, are, are demonstrating that commitment to community development. Yes, indeed. I mean, our 25 years ago when we started this nonprofit and, and, and when I looked at the struggles that I went through, the people that pulled me through, it was only befitting of me to say, what can I do to reach back and continue that legacy? So to start Transformation Life Center with our mission to ignite purpose, inspire success, and transform the lives of African-American Black collegiate students and youth living in underserved uh, communities through education, leadership development, and mental health and wellness is our mission. It is at the core and center of us to be intentional as a nonprofit to help create a pathway to success for our future Black leaders. And it's intentional because we know uh, systemic things that have um, um, stopped us from being able to do what we do. Um, and again, while we can look at those things, we can't stop. Uh, we have to get into the community, get on the colleges. We've expanded from one university to seven in the last year, uh, bringing in over 40 uh, black and brown college students into our leadership academy where we empower college students who are at the precipice of being our future leaders, right? They're four years 
or two years from being employees of BGSF, of IBM and a, a pastor or a leader or entrepreneur. So we value the opportunity to get top tier talent and take these college students and part into them the importance of the dream of what people die for, for us to have this beautiful opportunity. But when you are employed, we want them to understand that sometimes because of the color of your skin, you may not get that raise. And it's, it's unfortunate for us to prepare them for what they unfortunately in 2024 will still have to face. I faced uh, discrimination. I faced it. So as a 50 year old, my job is to prepare them for it, but never make them afraid to combat it. And Eric, be bold enough to know that I am qualified. I belong. I'm not here because of the color of my skin. I'm here because I uh, uh, am a leader and I'm worthy of this. So we have our college Leadership Academy called Pathway to Success. Again, duly, duly named, right? Pathway. It's not easy. There are no handouts. There are hills, valleys, detours, and even roadblocks that will stop these amazing kids from becoming great. But when we put them face to face with the Eric's and BGS, our corporate partners to equip them with networking, job readiness skills, they come out sharp. Uh, and I know that the Rosa Parks, the MLKs, would be proud of what we're doing. And over the last couple of years, our college students kept saying, man, you, I wish I had you in ninth grade. And we, we shied away from trying to start that pipeline earlier. But when you thought about it, we said, you know what? This struggle has to start from as early as elementary education. And so we started a program called Brown Boys Read, where we are inspiring the love of reading through the love of running to help black and brown boys improve reading proficiency, outrun childhood obesity, and live fuller and healthier lives. This is what Daryl Freeman was about. He was an Iron Man, right? Yeah. Jump in the ocean and swim two and a half miles. Jump out of the ocean and jump on a bike and ride 150 miles get off the bike and then run 26.2 miles a full marathon this is the struggle and this is commemorative uh, this this is 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 what we go through and take these young boys through life right there's health there's poverty and then there's the lack of education so we look at brown boys read as our second through fifth grade uh initiative that we are cultivating the future Daryl Freemans all the way back in second through fifth grade, helping these young men become better readers and love reading and loving education. Because you know, education always opens up doors of opportunities. When you're poor and you don't have hope and the streets are gravitating to you, we are the force that combats that force of negativity that the streets would get them. And we go in and we read for an hour and then we take these amazing young boys on a run. And uh, Daryl loved the program because we it's commensurate, commensurate of the struggle of life, right? It's, it's so much that goes on in the pathway to success. So these two amazing programs, Brown Boys Read, starting in second through fifth grade, it's all about literacy, leadership, and health and wellness to produce healthy, whole, and smart African-American men. And then our College Leadership Academy, we challenge all of our listeners today. If you're looking for uh, uh, diverse talent, we have some amazing students from Belmont, Vanderbilt, TSU, uh, Fisk University, uh, Lipscomb, uh, who are job ready and are going through uh, programming that you would be proud of. And then it all ends at that race every September, Eric, where I put a suit on. It's and not. sneakers, and I run 3.1 miles in our annual fundraiser called Steps of Success. We run 3.1 miles, bring all of our corporate partners, Brown Boys Read and college students, and we run in that race to raise money to continue to invest in these two amazing programs to continue to de develop future leaders in the African-American community. I'm blessed to be the leader of this amazing organization. It, it is an amazing organization. Uh, we we love the 5K. I mean, I, I tell so many people as we as we help promote that event with you about you out there in the suit, front <laughs> of the race, and and it's inspirational. It's very inspirational, yes. and we're proud to be a partner with you. We're really looking forward to expanding our partnership as you and I discussed yes, in or so uh, pathways to success and reaching out to these these uh, kids to make sure they know what the future can hold for them mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
Man, I, I appreciate your comments today. Uh, you're an inspiration. Everything you're doing, keep being you, man. Keep doing you. And 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 in reverence to Black History Month, I hope uh, everyone's kind of enjoyed listening to some of your thoughts. Um, and uh, we'll have a link on here on the bottom for all of our listeners uh, to Transformation Life Center's website. If anyone's interested in, in participating, come join BGSF. Come be intentional, right? And be yes, bold. Indeed. Be bold. Be intentional, be bold, and know that it's 365 Black when February's over. It's not for us to say, well, that's over. It that's is right. continue to work right. hand in hand all throughout the year, and we just celebrate in February uh, this amazing uh, culture that we live and that we live every day. So thank you for the opportunity for me to share. We appreciate all that you do, man, and we look forward to doing it again. You bet. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for chatting. Thank you. Appreciate it, my friend.